I'm going to ask some, I'm going to ask this young man. I need a young black man. Would you come up here on stage? There's a reason I want a young black man up here because he represents some things that I'm going to talk to you about in just a moment. And so, um, why don't you take a seat right there? And uh, if you wouldn't mind just taking your shoes off and your socks too, thank you. And then I'm going to wash your feet. Now, let me, let me say something before I wash his feet because this is important. This young man doesn't just represent black America. This young man represents all minorities for, for this moment right here. What most people don't realize about my race is my race has a hard time getting what's wrong in America. We have a challenge. The great slogan that was spoken at the beginning of this presidential race that got a person elected was, we're going to make America great again. Going to make America great again. When I first heard that, I, and everybody cheered, yay, I looked at the crowd, and it was predominantly my race cheering for that statement. And I thought to myself, okay, if I'm going to be a Christian, I need to filter that statement through the lens of other races, not just my own. And I'm thinking to myself, here's what I'm thinking. I was thinking to myself, okay, if I'm a black person, maybe a young black man in America, and I'm thinking through the lens, make America great again, I'm thinking... When was America great for you? When was there a season of time in the last 240 something years that America was great for you? And so, I mean, I think about it. In the beginning of our nation, 1700s, we brought a lot of people like this young man from Africa by the millions. In fact, history tells us that between 17 and 60 million, no one has the exact number, died in that transition. The great, greatest atrocity of one race in, the hum, in the, all of human history, way bigger than the Holocaust. And we all know about the Holocaust. But for some reason, <laughs> this has never been really advertised too much because my race, we don't want to feel guilty. And I'm not saying you should feel guilty because you didn't do that, but your race did. Then, then after we had Africans as our slaves, African come to our country and become our slaves, then, then we also have to live with the fact that we also conquered Native Americans as well. We kind of huddled them over in the Midwest, took over their land. Then we went down to South of America and we said, Mexicans... We're going to take some of your land from you as well. California, Arizona, New Mexico used to be Mexico. Who would think of a Hispanic person? When was America great for Hispanic people? When was America great for Native Americans? What about Asians? Was it great when Pearl Harbor happened and we took 120,000 Japanese from their homes in California? put them in camps for four years because we suspected even though they were citizens that they might turn against our country? Was that great? The only people that could honestly say maybe America was great would be me, my race. It was great for us. We had a lot of folks like this young man and other people serving us for the last couple hundred years. Now, now over the last few years, some of those people are rising up and they've had enough. And movements are starting and different things are happening in our nation that are saying, hey, we matter too. We are not the majority, but we matter too. And people like us are getting scared. We're getting fearful. Man, this nation is not like it used to be. Are we filtering that through the eyes of Jesus, or are we filtering that through the eyes of our race? And so what Jesus would do in the middle of all this is he would take a person like this who maybe in general terms wouldn't normally be connected together. A young black man 
and an old white man. <laughs> we probably don't have a lot of things in common. The way we grew up, the society we live in. I don't get in my car and worry about a cop pulling me over. I don't worry about being treated unjustly in society like you do. I don't grow up with fear. I don't worry about inequality for my race. I don't have those concerns. But I have them for you. And I care about you. And when I got born again, God did something in my heart towards people like you. And I started thinking, you know, I can't heal this nation. I'm not a healer. Jesus is the healer. The greatness of a nation is never based on a race or the accomplishments of a race. The greatness of a nation is based on whether or not it's submitted to God. We're not great because of our prosperity. We're not great because we won wars. We're great only if God is in our lives and ruling over us. And we've become a nation where God's no longer ruling over us. And that's why we're so angry at each other. And we're fighting with one another and we're in division over each other. And I can't see our government healing that. I can't see any president healing that. I can't see any leader healing that in society other than Jesus. And that has to start with us in the church. So, Jesus would take one of the disciples and he would wash their feet. He would pour water over their feet because the feet represented the dirtiest part of their body, the lowest part. And he'd say, you don't have to wash the whole body, just wash the feet. It's the, it's the hardest part to put your hands on. <laughs> Who in their right mind would want to wash somebody else's feet yet Jesus did that and he said you see how I'm doing this you see how I'm putting my hands on your feet what I'm saying by that is I'm trying to get you to see something you're, you're valuable to me I'm not superior to you you are just as valuable as I am I know society hasn't told you that and I know circumstances in life haven't told you that and I know history hasn't told you that but God says that about you and you deserve the right as a young black man to grow up without fear you, you don't you don't you don't need to be growing up with wondering whether or not you're accepted by another society God accepts you he's the great equalizer when he came to the cross he came to equalize everybody, to take slaves and make them equal to the free and make the woman and the man equal and make the, the poor and the white equal, I mean, the poor and the rich equal and to make everyone equal. And he says, look, I, I want you to do this because this is what heals the world. This is what causes the world to come together is when we serve each other, when I can serve you and you can serve me and we're not living our life trying to have power over each other. But we're, we're family. You're a Christian. I'm a Christian. You're my brother. I'm your brother. We bros. <laughs> but, but there's not enough of me doing this. More of this needs to happen. And so it, maybe it starts with us in the church. Maybe it starts with the people that are in this church that we would just say, you know, regardless of our history together, what if we just started loving each other and serving each other and maybe washing each other's feet? What if we had a small group one night and we just all just humbled ourselves, got down here real low and looked up to you and said, you know, I value you. I care what happens to you. I care what you experience in America. I care about the hurts and the wounds of your past. I care about the history of my race against your race. And I'm sorry. I repent. I didn't do it myself personally, but I take responsibility for my own race because Jesus didn't do anything to hurt people, but he took responsibility for them. 
He took responsibility when he went to the cross. And I need to go back to the cross. Because we need healing. We need healing in this relationship. We need, we need to be one together instead of you doing your thing and me doing my thing. And so you're a good representation, not just of black America. You're a good representation of all people that maybe haven't been treated with value wherever they're from. And I just want you to know that from this point on, my life is about making sure that you understand that, that you grow up in an America where there are people that value you from another race. I love you, bro. Thank you.